Hello, welcome to today's video. We are going to be doing peppermint mocha nails. As you can see right here, I'm using Beetle's foundation base gel, and I'm just gonna coat all of the nails with this. I personally love peppermint mocha season while I actually love anything peppermint. So for me, this season, winter time and Christmas is perfect. The way people go crazy over pumpkin spice is me with peppermint mocha and candy canes and peppermint in general. So as you can see here, I'm just painting on. I was running out, so I was taking a little bit of time. So I was just putting on these base coat and I'm going to put this in the nail lamp for 60 seconds. Now we're going in with Beetles. This is A111. It is a pretty milky brown and this is actually going to be put on the pinky and the thumb. Peppermint mocha, of course you know there is chocolate in there. So that is what the brown is representing. I don't know why I went pinky first and then thumb. I don't know. But this polish was actually from one of Beetle's little sets and it's actually really great for starting off your collection of gel polishes. Now we are with Nail Addict C Swing. And it's a really great nude. This is actually one of my favorite nudes ever. And we're just gonna put that on the pinky nail. And I wish Nail Addict made this particular polish a little more opaque. It's actually really sheer. And that's how it looks now after two coats. Now we're coming in with Nail Addict White Addict as well as Cleopatra. And we're just gonna just lower you to white. And this is gonna go on the pointer. And then we had, ooh, Cleopatra and that's gonna go on the ring finger. These get cured for 30 seconds, the nail addicts. The Beatles is 60 seconds. And just to go back on the news, I just put the whole thing in for 60 seconds to make sure that it was cured properly. I do apologize if I'm out of frame in this video. This is my first YouTube video doing a tutorial, so trying to figure out angles is interesting. So we are back with the white. I'm taking this blooming gel. And I'm gonna put a layer of it on. We're gonna be doing a marble. So I'm just putting a layer of this blooming gel on first. And then you don't see it, but I'm actually taking three colors from Kira Sky's, their like liner collection that they have out now. So I'm taking the red, the silver, and more red because this one has a white background. So we're just gonna put that all in a little palette. And then I'm going to get my brush. There we go. This was a little big. You see later on, I switched it out. And we're just gonna put that on there and let the blooming gel, you know, let it spread out and do what it does. And unfortunately for this one, because the brush was so big, it ended up pretty much covering all that white, but I still ended up liking it. And I just went in and added some more silver because for me, it was too, to red. So that's that. We're gonna put that in the lamp for 60 seconds after cleaning up the edges. We're gonna put that in the lamp. And now we're gonna go again. We have the red and we're gonna put that blooming gel on again. Just a nice little thin layer. If you don't have blooming gel, you could also use base coat. I heard it does the same exact thing. And it's just gonna help spread. So now we have the white with the silver. And I actually learned from the white nail with the red that I'm just gonna put on more lines and get a smaller brush. So that's what I'm doing right now, just making the marble. Yes, we yeah, are making marble. And then you see I take a smaller brush and then pick it all up and just move it around which actually worked out a lot better this time. I am actually happier. Again, I do apologize for being out of frame. I have to work on that for my next videos because I want you to see what I'm doing. So there you have that. So that's like the candy cane swirl part of things. Now we're going in with the no wipe top coat from Nail Addict and we're just gonna top coat these two nails. So as you can see, that's the white and that's the red. I'm just gonna do a quick top coat and cure for 30 seconds. Just 
Let's make sure everything's there. It's nicely coated and pretty. And I'm just showing you and cleaning up those sides. And that's how everything is looking right now. So we're gonna take the, the chocolate nails, we'll say. And I'm going to matte top coat those because we're gonna do crystal work. And now the crystal. So we're taking Lisette's Blingit that I actually wanted to try out if you watched my last video in the haul. This is one of the new items and we just have some crystals and right there you might see a little candy cane, um, a little candy cane embellishment that I got from Shein. So I'm just gonna place that on there. See, I realized I was out of frame. So just gonna put a little bit of that on there. I actually prefer using a brush for this. I don't know why I used the end of my picker upper, which I also got from Lisette. If you saw that in my haul, I don't know why I used that end because it ends up putting on too much. And now you see me struggling to get this little charm on. That was the funniest. So we're gonna put that right in the middle. I should have put more glue on because this charm actually ended up sliding a lot especially when I wanted to do the other thing. So we have that there. Now we're gonna go back in with the gem glue. And I'm just gonna make two lines from the ends to make it look like a necklace. So we're gonna put more charms on, excuse me, rhinestones actually. As you can see, it's, it's laying on where I keep some of my rhinestones. These, all those rhinestones that you see in the background are actually from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description box below to show you where to get all those. They're not glass, I believe these are resin rhinestones, but they're still really good and you can get a lot of different colors inexpensively. So I was trying to figure out how I was gonna do the nails. So I have white and clear rhinestones, cyan, as you can see I have this little box. And I'm just using and going side to side, that's a SS, eight I believe and we're just going back and forth and creating like a little necklace as you can see there it's like a little necklace look I'm trying to get a good angle so you can see what I was doing and that is my stone placement for this nail I wanted it to look like jewelry like a honestly I've said this how many times now a candy cane necklace again I'm out of frame so then we're adding in caviar beads. Caviar beads are the game changer when it comes to crystal placements. I feel if you have any excess glue, it helps fill it out and it just fills out and bulks up the design. Great thing about press-ons, you can rotate it however you want and I'm out of camera again. So then we're on to the thumb. So for the thumb, I was doing a bit of a cuticle design. So we're gonna put on a little bit more of that gem glue and just have it go around the cuticle right there. Just around, around that cuticle claw. Give me a little bit more, little bit more. There we go. And as you can see, I had a lot of trouble having that big old container of crystals on my desk, so I just, Depotted some, I popped some out in these little containers. And we're just gonna go in with a little bit of a pattern, starting with the red and the clear, and then just decreasing in size. Trying to mix it up as well. I see a lot of people that do crystal placements and they do such pretty designs, but it's all different sizes and just mixed up and it, it's just so pretty. So I was trying to do that and not be so system with it and be like oh yes if we're starting with an ss8 then we have to go to ss6 and so on and so forth but i think i still ended up doing it that way anyway so we're just putting on the crystals here the different rhinestones just going back and forth between the cyan and the clear and trying to get that together and then of course we're going to add in more of those caviar beads i think caviar beads go should be on every single crystal set now i say that now and probably later on in some videos later i won't be using crystals these caviar beads in every set but for the most part i try to and that's why i have millions of different colors so it doesn't just come in silver they come in all different colors i actually bought some more from Shein. i'll put a link to the haul that i did where you can see those 
and you can use them for this purpose. If I was using different colors, you could match your caviar beads with the theme of the rhinestones. So there you have, I'm just over here making sure that they're in these little spaces and it gives it the look like, if you ever look at jewelry and how it has the prongs around the stones, that look is what I love about caviar beads. So it definitely does give that look. It fills it out. It makes everything look just a little bit neater. And now we're onto the pinky and I'm just gonna do a straight row. I'm not doing any crystals, just a straight down couple, probably like three or four row of crystals. I'm just getting everything together. I like to clean up as I go when I do my nails. So it's not such, everything's in the way. So we have that back. That line is crooked. I just realized that. That whole gem line is crooked. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. See the things that you work on after you film and, you know, just here. Just here looking and editing and then you realize how much you messed up on some parts. But that's life. You learn, live and you learn. So we're just going back and forth. Again, so the thumb we started with the red. So this one we're gonna start with the clear. These are not silver, these are clear stones. And I'm just here going back and I'll just let you watch me do the placement. Ooh, I'm really out of camera. I'm out of focus. And that's the final look. That's all of them together. They're all top coated. I absolutely loved how this set came out for actually my first try, and this is a complete freestyle.